There are plenty of reality shows that document weight loss, but My 600 Pound Life stands out as it focuses on the lives of real people. Unfortunately, that means viewers get an intimate glimpse into the sometimes tragic outcomes along with the successes. Here are the My 600 Pound Life stories that didn't end well. Dr. Now may seem like an unlikely reality TV star. However, he's the only person who appears in every episode of My 600 Pound Life, and his skills in the operating room are the reason why. The veteran surgeon isn't known for his small talk, but he clearly lets his patients know what they're facing without diminishing their humanity. Oftentimes, Dr. Now offers his patients a reality check on the conditions related to obesity. According to a journal published by the National Center for Biotechnology Information, complications can include high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, sleep apnea, stroke, heart disease, depression, cancer, arthritis, and gout. Now that you had the surgery, the physical drive to eat is gone. So you have to deal with what is driving you to eat. Many patients on the show successfully lose weight after therapy, diet modifications, increased exercise, and weight loss surgery. But sadly, some of the show's stars can't make the lifestyle changes, or pass away due to the stress on their bodies. Robert's situation was dire from the outset. It didn't take long for Dr. Now to discover that Robert not only weighed nearly 850 pounds, but that he also had an addiction to painkillers. I hate that this is our life and that this is Rob's life. Could call the wings, love wings. But nothing stops him from eating. After a rocky start, Robert was able to finally get some control over his compulsive overeating. The New Jersey resident had a lot of love on his side, including that of his mother and his fiance, Catherine. With that support and a whole lot of work, Robert managed to lose a significant amount of weight under Dr. Now's care, almost 350 pounds, including the surgical removal of a lymphedema mass. Unfortunately, the surgery left Robert depressed and longing for painkillers again. He even tore his own stitches hoping to get more of them. Tragically, Robert passed away from a heart attack in November 2017 at 41 while the show was still filming. Dr. Now was not shy about expressing his frustration at the medical system for its complicity in Robert's addiction, which ultimately killed him. He also hailed him for being a fighter. He knew that he was running against the clock and his body gave up but he never did give up. Few of the stars of My 600 Pound Life are more notorious than the Asante brothers, Stephen in particular. And Stephen Asante suffers from severe psychological issues, so he's going to be a unique case. The pair may be bound by blood, but Stephen's antics ensured that he and Justin were not brotherly to one another. For one, he pretended to be following Dr. Now's strict diet during the show, but was secretly binge eating. Additionally, he would manipulate and bully anyone, including his father, to get what he wanted. He also continued abusing painkillers, including stealing Justin's while he was healing from his gastric bypass. He's a big boy that just tortured me all day. Because of Stephen's continued and repeated abusive behavior toward his brother, which started in childhood according to Justin's Reddit AMA, Justin ended up quitting Dr. Now's program in spite of both his father's and the doctor's best efforts. He also accused the show of blackmailing him in a now-deleted Reddit post. As of mid-2019, he lives in Rhode Island. It appears that Stephen is out of the program too and is now living in Iowa with his new wife, according to Starcasm. Sean Milliken seemed like he was moving in the right direction after a rocky start on his weight loss journey. After initially weighing in at nearly 900 pounds, Sean was finally able to turn things around and get weight loss surgery. That, in turn, helped him drop hundreds of pounds and regain his ability to walk, according to his follow-up on My 600 Pound Life, Where Are They Now? I know I can hit all these goals in the next year, and that's what I'm determined to do. But in 2018, tragedy struck when Sean's mother passed away, according to TLC. Understandably, he was devastated as he and his mother were extremely close. Subsequently, he had to move out of his Houston apartment. In yet another sorrowful turn of events, Sean passed away in the hospital due to complications from an infection in February 2019. TMZ reported that his father wrote on Facebook, he was having problems with his breathing. They were able to resuscitate him and a short time later, his heart stopped. Sean was just 29 years old. Having the courage to work with Dr. Now and appear on My 600 Pound Life isn't easy. And unfortunately for some patients, they're just not ready to conquer their addiction to food and completely overhaul their lifestyle. Such is the case with Penny, who appeared in season two. I let food be the way that I found solace. 
She was initially able to lose 40 pounds on a controlled diet, so Dr. Now approved her for weight loss surgery. But after Penny's gastric bypass, she gained 5 pounds when she should have been losing weight. It appeared she was secretly having food brought to her. Penny eventually left Houston and moved back home to Maryland, quitting the program altogether against Dr. Now's professional advice. In her follow-up episode, he stated plainly that her addiction will kill her. Either people around her stop enabling her, <laughs> or her addiction eventually is gonna kill her. Penny's Facebook account has been mostly dormant, which only fuels speculation that her diet is not going well and seems to confirm what Dr. Now called her, quote, delusional thinking. Dr. Now is known for giving patients the hope they need to turn their lives around and the tools to help them on their journey. That's what Kelly Mason was looking for when she made the trip to Houston to meet with the famous surgeon. Every day is a bad day, and every step is torture. When she arrived, viewers learned that she had a host of health issues, including high blood pressure, a blood clot in her leg, type 2 diabetes, arthritis, thyroid issues, reflex, and heart problems. It was clear that she needed help. Some days it just feels like um, it would just be easier if I wasn't here. People could just move on. Things started looking up for Kelly when Dr. Now admitted her to the hospital, where she was able to lose over 200 pounds. She then had weight loss surgery and dropped another 100 pounds. Upon discharge, she was hopeful and committed to sticking to her diet and exercise regimen, but Kelly's heart had already suffered too much stress despite her best efforts. She passed away in her sleep of a heart attack in February 2019, according to Inquisitor. Dr. Now pointed out, however, that she hadn't returned to her old habits. She went out fighting. Like many of the stars who appear on My 600 Pound Life, James was initially unable to leave his bed due to being almost 800 pounds and had a painful skin infection. But even though I still open my eyes each day, I'm not living life because I'm just trapped in this bed all day. Additionally, James's family had made some huge sacrifices for him, including his daughter dropping out of school to care for him and his father refinancing his home to get him to Houston by an ambulance to see Dr. Now. But when James arrived in Houston, he hadn't lost the weight Dr. Now required him to. He dropped a bit while supervised, but soon thereafter, viewers learned that James had instead gained enough to weigh in at 840 pounds. Eventually, Dr. Now told him to leave if he wasn't willing to stick to the program. My dad's gotten worse, and I'm worried. That he's close to losing it all, he basically already has. When TLC caught up with James a little later, things hadn't improved. In fact, Dr. Now called Adult Protective Services on James's girlfriend when he discovered James was suffering organ failure, and she was still bringing him food while in the hospital. Dr. Now dismissed him once again, citing his inability to make changes. As viewers learned on her episode, Shanae endured an extraordinarily difficult childhood. In order to cope with the pain, she turned to food at an early age and slowly grew to be 780 pounds. Food made me feel better. It made me feel happy. Hopeful that she could turn her life around, Shanae turned to Dr. Now for help. But she was never approved for weight loss surgery because she refused to follow the diet and exercise plan Dr. Now gave her. She and her husband were even caught ordering pizza and burgers to her hospital room. You both need to stop lying. You come here to have weight loss surgery. You haven't lost any weight in four months. Why? Since the show, Shanae has posted a handful of videos on her YouTube channel, some of them from hospitals as she struggles with her health. And while she claims to have lost weight on her Facebook page, any progress appears difficult to discern. As one of the first stars of season one, Henry Foots endeared himself to viewers with his kind disposition and sincere desire to attend his high school reunion looking his best. My total fear is death. I'm gonna die. I know I will die if I don't have the surgery. Thanks to his hard work, Henry went from 750 pounds all the way down to 275 pounds and was poised to put his past behind him. But in a heartbreaking twist, Henry passed away in 2013, several months after having a medical episode while driving a bus, according to Starcasm. The cause of death remains unknown. Many of the stories on My 600 Pound Life have especially tragic beginnings, which trigger overeating to cope with difficult feelings. Season 7's Mercedes was no different. Mercedes weighed in at 773 pounds, was dependent on her young children for care, and was struggling with severe lymphedema. She clearly wanted to be able to live a normal life. I know it's hard for her because she want to do for us 
and all it's not doing for her. But Mercedes wasn't able to qualify for weight loss surgery. She had only lost 80 pounds and was full of excuses as to why. According to her Facebook profile, she's now living in Cincinnati, which is a long way from Houston, so she's likely off Dr. Now's program. One of the most shocking things ever on My 600 Pound Life was when Lisa Fleming's daughter discovered maggots in the folds of her mom's skin. It seemed like that would be the wake-up call that got Lisa motivated to stick to the diet that Dr. Now had prescribed her, especially since she weighed over 700 pounds. That was also on top of needing a team of paramedics to get her out of her house. Although Lisa did lose some weight under supervision, she gained it again when she was back home. Viewers watched as Lisa's manipulative tactics became apparent, arguably some of the worst in the show's history. By the end of her episode, Dr. Now was clearly frustrated with Lisa's unwillingness to change and dismissed her from his program. When all you do is give in to what's easy, you sometimes forget it's the more difficult challenges that make you stronger. Not even a year after Lisa appeared on My 600 Pound Life, she passed away at her home at age 50, according to Page Six. Jean's life had not been an easy one, and it only seemed to go even further downhill during her episode of My 600 Pound Life. My life can't get any worse, but my body and my health are getting worse by the day. She first appeared in a messy home along with her mother and a father who struggled with severe mental illness. And by the time Jean and her mother Barbara arrived in Houston, things took a turn for the worse when Barbara had to be hospitalized due to illness. Then, Jean's father back home was discovered dead in his bed. Unfortunately, circumstances proved to be overwhelming for Jean, who decided she wasn't ready to follow Dr. Now's program. Instead of staying in Houston, she returned home. We certainly hope she'll get the help she needs in the future. James L.B. Bonner quickly became a season six fan favorite. There's days where I feel so worthless, I think. I'd be better off in the ground. After struggling with food and alcohol addiction and losing his foot after an ATV crash, James's weight ballooned to 650 pounds. Unable to care for himself, he decided to seek help from Dr. Now, determined to make a change. It was clear that James was a success story. He went from 650 pounds to less than half of that and was sticking to his diet and exercise regimen. Additionally, he had become a burgeoning social media star, with more than 8,000 Facebook followers, according to Starcasm. He was doing so well and losing so much weight that TLC halted his photo and video sharing, hoping to avoid any spoilers. But sadly, no follow-up episode would ever air. Tragically, James took his own life in 2018 at age 30, according to People magazine. I thought my brother was great. I had no worries. So I, I want to reach out to people out there that love alone is not going to save them. Plenty of reality shows feature dramatic transformations, but few chronicle the intensely emotional second chances that are documented on TLC's hit series, My 600 Pound Life. Dozens of men and women have had their lives changed thanks to the intervention of Dr. Now. And while the journey hasn't been easy, you won't believe what they look like today. Melissa Morris the OG of My 600 Pound Life, Melissa Morris, was the very first person ever featured on the show. The last time I weighed myself, I weighed 337 pounds, and I thought to myself, that's not big, that's not bad at all. But having weighed in back then at 653 pounds, these days, she's living a much different life. While her weight has fluctuated over the years, her Instagram proves she's not looking back. I could tell you this whole journey was easy, that that would be a lie. But it wouldn't be a lie to tell you it was worth it. Having children was something Morris desperately wanted, and despite a doctor once telling her she only had a 2% chance of getting pregnant, today, she's a mom of three. When I go in, I'm not going to tell you only the pretty parts. You're going to see all of it. You want, I want the good, the bad, the ugly. On top of raising her children, Morris also speaks publicly about her journey, proving there's no slowing her down. Jalen Whitworth Season 2 opened with Jalen Whitworth's story, which famously included her manipulative husband, who prioritized his fetish over Whitworth's life. She looked so big and comfy and soft and squishy. You know, I, I like big women, and she was she was their queen at the time. Fortunately for her health, the couple finally got a divorce, and they share joint custody of their daughter. He didn't want me to lose the weight, and I didn't deserve to feel bad about choosing my health. But Whitworth also admitted that she struggled with loneliness and depression, as well as cravings for sweets following the divorce. I want to eat things that are bad for me. I want to eat those sweets that really made me feel 
wonderful before. In spite of those challenges, however, she's moving forward and is ready for skin removal surgery. And she says she may even start dating. Paula Jones After an especially emotional episode of the show, Paula Jones is now enjoying long-term weight loss success. These days, she's in great shape, especially when you consider where she started. My skin is my jail. I really don't have a life. I'm just trapped, period. She's not afraid to pose in a swimsuit, but Jones also admits that she has to stick to her diet and work out on the reg. I hate feeling weak. Some people were born to work out. I'm not one of them. She's also outspoken about the obesity epidemic, which has claimed the lives of some of her friends and loved ones. She posted on Instagram, It is so senseless since it is preventable. It just isn't easy. There's no magic pill or even surgery, but it's a lifestyle of eating, exercise, and healthy habits. Amber Rashti of all of the stars of my 600-pound life, Amber Rashti is the emerging Instagram queen among them. Which makes sense, considering she made her debut on the show at just 23. Sometimes I think to myself, I'm never gonna change. But although Rashti is a social media star now, she has no plans to appear in a follow-up episode, citing some pretty serious beef with the production crew. Why are you trying to come the steps? Why are you even calling me to help you? I don't want help. I just wanted to do it." She told Starcasm, "...the experience was very disorganized and jarring, and there's not a whole lot I can say using my grown-up tact. They ran late, reshot difficult-to-replicate scenes, and really sort of acted like bullies." Rashdi continues to take good care of herself, and she works out regularly. Joe Wexler on season three, viewers were introduced to Joe Wexler, who weighed in at nearly 800 pounds. I was trying to find some way to off myself. Kept thinking it would be better for everybody. Fortunately, Wexler was able to get help from Dr. Now, who performed gastric bypass surgery after he lost 140 pounds on his own. It was really tough. One of the hardest things I ever did. Ever since, Wexler's had skin removal surgery and has lost 500 pounds. But the best was yet to come for the reality star. After he met a woman named Sarah, things got serious quickly for the lovebirds. When I met you, I met my destiny. Will you marry me? Yeah. The Wexlers celebrated their two-year anniversary in August 2018. Joe is also working hard in the IT sector and is taking online courses with big ambitions for the future. Laura Perez She's experienced a lot of changes since her episode, but for Laura Perez, not all of those changes were positive. I feel great about myself. I'm really happy. On her Where Are They Now episode, Perez revealed that she and her husband Joey were facing eviction, but there were deeper issues at play as well. I want to keep becoming more independent and get a job and have a career. He doesn't want me to do that. When Perez told Joey about her beauty school ambitions, he confessed he just wanted her to stay home and stay dependent. I'm not 600 pounds anymore, so I don't need to be trapped. But according to her Facebook, Perez is now remarried to a new man. She posted of her guy, "...thank God he is a great, hard-working, loving, caring man that puts me first. I'm blessed to have him." Nikki Webster While she was all smiles in her Look Back episode, it was a stark contrast from Nikki Webster's first appearance on the show. I feel like I'm trapped because it's just difficult to move my body. One big change? Webster was able to go shopping for a pair of pants for the first time in 10 years. I like you. <laughs> As she slipped into a pair of blue jeans, her joy was contagious. I feel good in them. I feel, I feel womanly and sassy. But a pair of pants isn't the only new thing in Webster's life. Her weight loss has also enabled her to excel at work, something she couldn't do before. But the really big news? Webster shared via Facebook in March 2018 that she had recently gotten married to Mark, who viewers were introduced to in her follow-up episode. And as she posted, she's loving her new take on life. She says, "...I've been able to experience a happiness I never thought possible. It's not that I'm just content, I'm exuberantly gleeful." To be able to start to resemble what I felt like on the inside, it's extremely powerful. Brittany Fulfer These days, she's almost unrecognizable compared to how she looked on My 600-Pound Life. A human body should not look the way my body looks. 
viewers first witnessed the dramatic changes in Brittany Fulfer's initial Where Are They Now episode. Then, in a later follow-up, an even more lean Fulfer appeared after additional surgery. I'm still adjusting to how much of a change all this has been. Though it was a bumpy ride, she celebrated her journey by hitting the beach. Fulfer has been squeezing every drop out of life lately, according to her Facebook page, and through it all, her husband has been by her side. She posted, I'm forever thankful to my husband. He is truly my strength, and without him, I do not know where I would be. Nicole Lewis all of the stories featured on the show involve hardship, but Nicole Lewis had to overcome some harrowing childhood traumas. I hate what my life has become, and if I don't change, I'm not going to be here much longer. But pains from the past didn't stop the determined mom from putting in the hard work to lose weight and improve her quality of life. It's one thing that brings us together is our love of food, but chips, food, most chips. definitely. When TLC caught up with her after her initial episode, viewers learned that Lewis had lost even more weight, bringing her total to over 200 pounds as of July 2018. These days, she's doing better than ever, and she recently celebrated five years with her fiancé, Charlie, according to Facebook. She wrote, He's my everything, and we are happy together. Our relationship is a million, a million times stronger than ever before. Sounds like Lewis found someone who takes just as good care of her as she now does for herself. When fans of My 600 Pound Life tune in, they expect to catch a glimpse of a jaw-dropping life transformation. But once in a while, the patients on the show throw everyone a curveball. From picking fights with show physician Dr. Now to sneaking pizza into the hospital, here are the My 600 Pound Life stars who rubbed us the wrong way. Penny Sager appeared on My 600 Pound Life Season 2, rendering her one of the reality show's OGs. Mmm, it's gonna be good. Food addiction has become my life. But unlike her fellow co-stars that season, Sager didn't comply with Dr. Now's diet and exercise plan. Although she did drop 40 pounds while hospitalized at the beginning of her episode, which qualified her for weight loss surgery, those pounds weren't lost for long. She even managed to gain weight after surgery. Penny must have somebody stinking in food. She figured out how to manipulate the system. Things didn't exactly improve in her follow-up episode either, in which Sager claimed she was doing much better and seeing improvements in her health. Of course, Dr. Now didn't agree, explaining that Sager is addicted to food and is also delusional about any so-called progress. I haven't been on a scale. I don't feel the need to be on a scale because it doesn't matter. As for where Sager is now, Starcasm reported that she keeps a low social media profile and that her photos show no transformation. When viewers first met Shanae Murray, she was deeply devastated over suffering two miscarriages. Given that she was also abused when she was younger, it's no wonder that she turned to food for comfort. Food made me feel better. It made me feel happy. There was a glimmer of hope, as Murray went to Dr. Now to help her get both her life and her weight back under control. But in the end, she was unwilling to stop compulsively overeating. Despite her claims of gaining water weight, something Dr. Now pointed out was clearly not the case. Murray was never approved for weight loss surgery. She continued to eat foods that were not in the program, including a famously illicit pizza, and never dealt with her underlying emotional issues. See what I find. What Freddy. You, what about Freddy? That belongs Freddy. Shanae, the lying need to stop now. Despite leaving Dr. Now's care, Murray set up a GoFundMe for her weight loss surgery. She later filmed herself tackling an eating challenge from her hospital bed. Season 7 of the show brought one of the most controversial stars in its history, Angela Johns. She suffered a tragic backstory involving abuse, drug addiction, and even prison time. As a result of her multiple traumas, Johns turned to food, eventually weighing over 608 pounds by the time she reached out to Dr. Now. But not only was Johns downright combative with Dr. Now, she claimed he was, quote, punishing her. She also tested positive for opiate use and heavy cigarette smoking. On top of all that, she was manipulative to her family members. After losing only 48 pounds and continuing to abuse drugs, Dr. Now gave Johns an ultimatum, go to rehab or end her weight loss journey with him. Johns didn't go to rehab and claimed Dr. Now was lying about everything. I'm going through a lot of changes right now. Bear with that. Okay, you done with your liver tantrum and finish talking? John set up a GoFundMe to help with her expenses, despite her non-compliance on the show. Some patients on My 600 Pound Life are so far gone that they are almost completely immobile, unable to care for themselves, and confined to their bed because of their weight. 
That was the case for James King, who weighed in at 791 pounds when viewers first saw him on season five. I'm not living life because I'm just trapped in this bed all day. But it's hard to have too much sympathy for King after witnessing his selfish behavior. For one, he had his daughter drop out of school so she could care for him. And his father, who had suffered a stroke, took out a second mortgage to finance his son's journey to Houston. Even after all of that, King refused to change. He was continually enabled by his girlfriend Lisa, who wouldn't stop bringing him food. It was so bad that Dr. Now called Adult Protective Services on her when he found out she snuck food to him in the hospital, even though King was experiencing organ failure. You gonna give me one little rig, bro? I gave you two. Oh. This stuff is good. King started a GoFundMe, which is no longer active. Occasionally, family members or romantic partners appear together on the show, which was the case for Lee Sutton and Renee Kaiser. The couple, who met and fell in love at a bariatric rehab facility, were eating themselves into a dangerous situation. When I'm depressed, I eat. When I'm sad, I eat. When I'm happy, I eat. Food is my drug of choice. And for Renee, too. Although they were both able to eventually lose weight and get the surgery, it became evident fairly early on that Sutton had anger management issues. This resulted in him being abusive to his partner both verbally and physically. It got so bad that Dr. Now sent him to see a therapist. Sutton was still being cruel to Kaiser in their follow-up episode, no matter how hard Kaiser tried to be kind and to de-escalate his behavior when his temper flared up. The only time you are ever nice to me or talk to me like a human is when you need or want something. Yeah. The story of Sutton's awful behavior continued off the air, according to Starcasm. Sutton reportedly cheated on Kaiser with a married woman, and Kaiser ended the relationship, per now-deleted social media posts. But it appears as though she took him back in the end. Of all of the stars on My 600 Pound Life, the story of Mercedes Cephas is among the most heartbreaking. After suffering abuse as a child, she began to experience feelings of shame, guilt, and sadness. By the time she was 15 years old, she had packed on 300 pounds and was using food to deal with the trauma. So that's where my life is now, eating all day to forget and to feel good. But when she was confronted about her eating habits by Dr. Now, as an adult, Cephas insisted that she wasn't overeating. She simply claimed she wasn't eating the right foods, even at 773 pounds. When she finally did move to Houston months later, she had dropped just under 50 pounds. By the end of her episode, after she had only lost around 80 pounds altogether, Dr. Now was adamant that she be admitted into the hospital, giving her three days to decide her future. If we don't intervene, she's not gonna be able to live much longer. When viewers first met Angela Gutierrez on her episode of the show, it was readily apparent that she had been through a lot. Having lost custody of her children due to child endangerment and attempting to take her own life, Gutierrez lost herself in compulsive overeating. By the time she made the journey to Dr. Now with her ex-boyfriend, she weighed in at 608 pounds. And that's in spite of the fact that she had already gotten weight loss surgery. Every single day of my life is an absolute nightmare. I just feel like I am trapped in this body. But when Dr. Now charged her to lose weight by following his diet plan, Gutierrez faltered. She started missing appointments and eventually dropped out of the program altogether to return to her home in Ohio. She still had one more check-in with Dr. Now, which she did via video chat. In it, she told him that she had lost 120 pounds, to which he responded that she was delusional. No human being should weigh 600 pounds, and I'm over it. Gutierrez updates her Facebook page regularly, but it's unclear if she's lost any actual weight since her episode. Pauline Potter was already infamous before she appeared on My 600 Pound Life. That's because she had herself certified as the world's heaviest woman in the 2012 Guinness Book of World Records, had appeared on Dr. Phil, and had made tabloid headlines when she said she lost weight by getting it on with her ex seven times a day, according to Starcasm. There is not one good thing about being fat. The only good thing that I get out of it is when I'm eating. The biggest highlight of my day is eating. By the time Potter stepped into Dr. Now's office, she weighed 678 pounds, and her health was beginning to suffer because of it. 
Even so, Potter was resistant, telling Dr. Now that he was overreacting when he suggested hospitalization to get her weight under control. Potter continued to be stubborn even after she had weight loss surgery, repeatedly butting heads with Dr. Now, much to the ire of viewers. You're gonna be mobile and you're gonna get up a move. Oh, later, we later. <laughs> Fortunately, Potter eventually got herself together, and in her follow-up episodes, managed to lose 300 pounds with skin surgery on the horizon. She regularly updates her Facebook, where she's looking slimmer and slimmer all the time. While Potter might have been a handful to begin with, it looks like she's turned it all around. When the camera started rolling for Cynthia Wells' episode, her loneliness was palpable. But as a single mom of five children, taking care of her family was becoming more difficult because of her weight. At 610 pounds, Wells was becoming less motivated to leave the house and more exhausted any time she had to move. My life is still dedicated to raising my other children. And I'm getting to a point where I can't physically do that anymore. When it came to following Dr. Now's program, however, Wells wasn't willing to be compliant for very long. She managed to earn herself the reputation of being one of the more bullheaded stars of My 600 Pound Life, at one point insulting Dr. Now's program and returning home to Oklahoma City. By the end of her episode, Wells' weight loss had stalled, and she was deep in denial about her emotional eating habits. I probably eat once a day. Okay, if you're eating once a day, you're gaining four pounds. We got a real serious problem with you. Fortunately, things were brighter in her follow-up episode, as Wells seemed much happier. She continued to lose weight and had gotten down to 361 pounds. While she still struggles with her weight, according to her Facebook page, she's definitely seen some real progress. Lisa Fleming started gaining weight when she was a child, thanks in part to a punishing mother. But it was after she witnessed her brother's murder that her eating truly spiraled out of control. By the time she landed My 600 Pound Life, she weighed over 700 pounds and was confined to her bed. As tragic as her backstory is, it's not what made Fleming so controversial. Instead, it was the discovery that she had maggots living in the folds of her skin. But after losing weight under medical supervision, Fleming returned home and went back to her old habits. Eventually, Dr. Now dismissed her from his program as she refused to comply with his orders. When I'm eating, nothing goes through my mind. I'm happy. Tragically, Fleming passed away at the age of 50 in 2018, according to Page Six. Everything changed for LaShonta White when she was 13 years old and became a young mother. That, on top of the trauma of her parents' divorce and abusive ex-boyfriends, caused her to seek solace and food. She weighed in at almost 700 pounds at the beginning of her episode. I could be upset and I eat my food and it'll soothe my pain. While hers wasn't an atypical story for the people who star on My 600 Pound Life, White's episode left viewers reeling for a variety of reasons. For one, her mother is extremely no-nonsense, frequently criticizing her daughter's weight in blunt terms. I've been concerned, you know. No mother do not like no big fat ass daughter. In turn, White showed a combative attitude toward Dr. Now, and at one point, she even hid fried chicken to avoid being caught eating it. That, on top of her manipulative ways, earned her a spot as one of the most controversial stars of My 600 Pound Life. You made your choice, and your choice is to kill yourself with food. Give me one more chance. No, no, we gave you all the chance you need. But not all was lost for LaShonta White. Dr. Now approved her conditionally for weight loss surgery, providing she could stand on her own two feet. Anyone who's seen the My 600 Pound Life double episode and follow-up episodes featuring Stephen Asante and his brother Justin can attest to the fact that he's quite possibly the most controversial star the show has ever seen. Asante came off as manipulative because of the way that he treated both his family and the medical staff that was trying to help him. These people are really, really, really getting on my last nerve. It's very frustrating how long I have to wait for everything. Asante constantly coerced his father into getting whatever he wanted, including unhealthy foods, and he bullied his brother repeatedly. He even went so far as to steal his brother's painkillers after he had weight loss surgery, in order to fuel his own addiction. Worse yet, he spilled a container of urine, leaving it for a nurse to clean up. Asante even caused Dr. Now to lose it when the doctor threatened to drop him off at a homeless shelter if he didn't get a handle on his behavior. Asante seems to have calmed down since then, but like most of these reality stars, it's hard to forget just how horrible he once was. 
You might have a lot of questions about my 600-pound life. Like, does Dr. Now really care about his patients? What's the deal with all the enablers? And can't the people on the show just make better choices? The answers to these questions might surprise you, so let's weigh in on the false things you can stop believing about my 600-pound life. To live through what she has and to be the person she is, that's beyond strength. Dr. Now, as his patients call him, has become quite the reality TV star thanks to the popularity of his show. But some viewers might think that he basically just plays a doctor on TV and isn't really that great at what he does. Dr. Now and I have a game plan, and if I decide I want to have more surgeries, I will. But Dr. Now is actually a pioneer in his field, with a long and successful career in medicine. For one, most doctors and hospitals won't accept patients over 450 pounds for weight loss surgery because they don't have the right equipment. But Dr. Now accepts many patients who far exceed that weight. Additionally, he was the first doctor in all of Houston to use laparoscopic techniques for groundbreaking procedures and has published his work in prestigious medical journals. So don't go thinking he just portrays a doctor on TV, this MD is the real deal. Degree or no degree, Dr. Now is quite the character. He's incredibly straightforward, usually to the point of bluntness, and doesn't feed his patients pretty stories promising that they won't have to work hard. Sometimes he can even seem overly clinical. His occasionally odd manner with patients might make one wonder if he's just in it for the money or the fame. This time next year, your life will be completely changed. But the truth is, Dr. Now isn't necessarily banking the big bucks for the surgeries he performs. On the contrary, he says he's motivated by a sincere desire to help people enjoy healthy and productive lives, not take them for everything they're worth. He told Houstonia magazine, "...looking at the moral obligation that we've got, you see somebody who has no life who could have a life. We don't need to be rich. We do make a living, but we don't need to worry about making a living out of every patient we see." So this is a very concerning pattern that you need to get the handle on. Otherwise, this is going to lead you back to gain everything you lost. Even though the patients on the show receive resources and surgery to help them get to a healthier place in life, there's a lot that goes into filming the show. Suck it up, buttercup. It's time to go. Gotta get this done. For one, there's always a camera around, so participants are always being watched. And often it's difficult for patients to make the trek even to see the doctor. Oftentimes they have to uproot their entire lives and relocate to Houston. And it's been a long time since I've been in a car. And now I'm going to be in one for at least 20 hours." So you might wonder if participants are also getting a massive kickback to be featured on the show. In reality, the patients reportedly receive up to $1,500 as a talent fee, plus a $2,500 relocation stipend if needed. That's not a lot, especially when it comes to medical expenses. Some patients who have been on the show have been open about financial struggles continuing long after their stories have been broadcast around the world. Some have spoken of trouble affording cars and transportation, while others have talked about not having enough money to finance important medical procedures, such as skin removal surgery. Basically, just because someone was on TV doesn't mean they're rolling in the dough. There's not a day that goes by that I don't have pain. There are a few things that all of the patients have in common on My 600-Pound Life, and enduring serious pain is definitely one of them. Whether it's difficulty walking, driving, or trying to accomplish even the most basic tasks, patients on the show have talked at length about how much they're hurting, both physically and mentally. Being this overweight, everything I do is hard and it's a struggle. While you might be tempted to think that some patients are making things sound worse than they are, they're likely not exaggerating. According to a study in the Journal of Pain Research, obese individuals commonly report that they do experience experience all kinds of chronic pain. So if someone on the show says they're hurting, their pain is worth believing in. One way or another, it's probably true. As Dr. Now often says, most of the people on the show have enablers. They're usually family members who are complicit in a patient's compulsive overeating. Are you for breakfast? Thought you'd never ask. <laughs> all right. Often, enablers don't just tolerate the overeating, they'll also bring patients the very food that's essentially killing them. So you could ask, once Dr. Now puts his patients on a diet, why don't these enablers just stop bringing the extra food? If I don't do what she wants, it's a war zone. I asked for one Thing. The psychology of addiction and enabling is actually quite complicated. From fear of hurting their feelings or retaliation from the addict to a desire to be liked or loved, enabling behavior can be quite a challenge to overcome. Doesn't look like he lost any weight. You're killing him. According to Psychology Today, fat phobia runs rampant in society, and it complicates the lives of the obese in a variety of ways. That includes the widespread belief that obese people are lazy and lack willpower and are solely responsible for their body size. And many people believe that the patients on My 600-pound life could just stop eating if they really wanted to. I'm really feeling the need for a little indulgence. But longtime viewers know how hard it can be for patients to make the changes they need for their very survival. I know their situation has a lot to do with what I allowed to happen when they were kids. 
but it's still hard to sit there as their mom and not do something about it. This is exactly why Dr. Now will often send patients to receive psychological counseling to help them deal with the issues that compel them to eat. Once they face their demons, they often find that they can better control their dietary intake. Most people know that losing weight can be extremely difficult. That's one reason why weight loss surgery is so popular. It helped many people lose weight and transform their lives. And according to the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, even more of these procedures are being performed every year. I know surgery is risky, but not having it is riskier. But the reality is, weight loss surgery is no quick fix. A fact Dr. Now is quick to point out. He told Houstonia, People come looking for a single solution to their problem, and sometimes the answer is not what they want to hear. They think surgery is the solution for everything, and it's not going to change people's behavior toward food. This will help him to continue to lose weight, but this is really just the beginning for them. Just like he often says on the show, surgery is a tool to help patients gain control over their food addiction, but they have to put in the hard work of adopting healthy eating and exercise habits for the rest of their lives. That's not an easy task. It's not easy being obese. Beyond the physical struggles, people of a certain size face widespread bias, including the misconception that larger people are doomed to be unlucky in love. As a result, some people might think that the clients on the show are doomed to a life of solitude. He has no idea how close to death I feel every day. But regular viewers know that nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, many patients already have romantic partners when they enroll in Dr. Now's program. What do you see in our future? What do you see in our future? Nothing. Romantic partnerships can sometimes fall apart during the show if one of the partners is uncomfortable with their loved one making changes, but even then, those patients regularly go on to find new love. Another thing that many patients on My 600 Pound Life have in common is the tragic life experience of childhood trauma. My stepdad started to abuse me and my siblings. Some participants grew up in a chaotic household with parents addicted to drugs or alcohol. Some were abused by an adult figure in their lives. Some were subjected to violence and others survived assault. But is it really possible that childhood trauma can cause someone to eat their way to 600 pounds? The answer is a resounding yes. According to Dr. Judith J. Wertman, writing for Psychology Today, no one gains massive amounts of weight just because they love to eat. There is almost always a sad story. Sometimes we think we're hungry for food when we're really hungry for purpose. Those sad stories are often about how a painful childhood trauma altered an individual's psychology to the point where their compulsive overeating couldn't be controlled. And the show reveals in extreme cases just how devastating the impact of these painful events experienced in early life can really be. Food was my comfort through good and bad situations, but it didn't help with some of the shit that was going on. Quite often, when patients first arrive at Dr. Now's office and step on the scale, they're surprised to see how much they actually weigh. While it must be extremely difficult to be confronted by the reality of how much weight they've gained, the reactions can make one wonder. Wouldn't the average person already know that they've tipped the scales over 600 pounds, given how many calories they take in every day? I can't face the reality of how many calories I eat, so I just don't keep track at all. The answer is not exactly. The truth is many patients don't truly realize how out of control things have gotten until they're confronted with some hard numbers. For one, most bathroom scales only measure up to 300 pounds, so there's often no way for them to get an accurate read on their weight. Even scales you find at most doctor's offices aren't built to weigh someone who weighs 600 pounds or more. That's why Dr. Now has a custom scale in his office that can weigh up to 900 pounds. If you've been avoiding the numbers long enough, catching a first glimpse at your real weight can be a definite shock. 725. My 600 Pound Life has gotten so popular that TLC created a spin-off series, Where Are They Now?, which follows up on previous participants and the progress they've made. The last two years have been the most life-changing years of my life. It's usually a heartwarming story as many patients continue to make solid progress and are much happier than they were before surgery. I feel, I feel womanly and sassy. It takes a lot for me to feel sassy. But if you're hoping to see every single star's follow-up episode, that's not gonna happen. For some, the realities of filming a reality show aren't exactly positive. For example, season 3's Amber has expressed several issues she had with the production company. She told Starcasm, They ran late, reshot difficult-to-replicate scenes, and really sort of acted like bullies. When I would say I had a boundary I didn't want crossed, their first reaction was always to threaten to postpone or cancel my surgery. But even considering her unfortunate experience, Amber also stresses that she doesn't regret her surgery, and that Dr. Now is, quote, truly wonderful. 
Some people like to say that a person's weight is simply the result of the calories they take in versus the calories they burn on a daily basis. Additionally, some folks think it's easy to make healthy choices and simply eat when they're hungry and stop when they're full. If all that were true for everyone, it should be easy for an obese person to lose weight, right? Well, it's actually much more complicated than that. I don't feel entitled, but I want what I want, and when I don't get it, I get pissed off. Dr. Now wrote in Obesity Help, we need to spread the message that obesity is not a patient's choice, that it is a metabolic and genetic disposition that people have, and this is a disease and needs to be treated as a disease. The evidence is clear. When it comes to gaining and losing weight, there's a lot more at play than a person's willpower. Another popular weight loss-themed reality show is The Biggest Loser, in which obese contestants compete against one another to see who loses the most weight. The winner is awarded a cash prize and, of course, the title of Biggest Loser. I feel like a new man. I'm in the best shape of my life. But the production of the series came under scrutiny when it was revealed that the techniques used on the show didn't typically lead to long-term weight loss. Day one, funnest day in the world. Jump on, 15 seconds, go. According to the Harvard Health Letter, the hormonal changes that some participants endured during the competition eventually caused them to just just regain the weight. Additionally, evidence suggests that the best weight loss solution for those who are severely obese is surgery, not competing to see who can do the most jumping jacks. So it's clear that the techniques used on The Biggest Loser are drastically different than those of My 600 Pound Life. Sure, Dr. Now requires all of his patients to eat a healthy diet, get exercise and stick to the program, but he's sure not shipping them off to boot camp. This doctor's not in it to entertain people. He's there to get results. Season after season, TLC's My 600 Pound Life has documented the unscripted journeys of countless morbidly obese moms, dads, sons, and daughters on the road to a healthier, more independent life. But that doesn't mean that the cameras capture the full story. Here's everything they tried to hide on the show. My 600 Pound Life may show you just how difficult it is for participants to shed half their body weight, but the road to recovery is far from over after the cameras stop rolling. Some stars thrive, while others find it hard to keep the weight off and live a normal life, one that doesn't involve overeating and remaining housebound. I cannot function without wontons. They're not the best thing for me. But the show does follow up with some of its former cast members months or even years after their TV debut. The spin-off series My 600 Pound Life, Where Are They Now? follows former series favorites as they continue with their weight loss journeys and do things they could have never done before. In 2015, TLC caught up with Jalyn Whitworth from season 2, who lost 400 pounds on the show, and even more weight after the cameras turned off. That transformation gave her the confidence to even start dating for the first time since her divorce. My life is so much better now. Just because you get to appear on a popular reality TV show doesn't necessarily mean you've hit the jackpot. According to Starcasm, each of the show's cast members receives $1,500, what is considered to be a talent fee for the initial episode, which typically takes a year to shoot. And even when it comes to royalties, stars typically miss out no matter how often their episode airs. If they agree to appear on the show's spin-off series, My 600 Pound Life, Where Are They Now?, they do receive another check. Participants also receive a relocation stipend of $2,500 prior to making the move to Houston, Texas, where Dr. Now is based, according to Starcasm. It's necessary to relocate in order for the patients to meet with Dr. Now and qualify for weight loss surgery. But sometimes that relocation fee doesn't go very far. Following the death of favorite star Robert Bouchelle, a GoFundMe was created for his fiancée, Catherine, to help cover costs of the relocation, plus hospital and medical bills. I've been fighting this weight loss battle for 31 years. And I made my life in prison. And I've imprisoned Catherine and my mother, too, with me. My 600 Pound Life participants are rewarded for their appearances with financial assistance for one year, which typically covers Dr. Now's expensive medical fees, according to Starcasm. And that's assuming they qualify for weight loss surgery during the year-long filming process. If they do qualify within the time frame and undergo weight loss surgery, they may lose the weight, but then comes another obstacle – excess skin. Skin removal surgery is an option, but it's not covered by the show because it is considered to be a cosmetic procedure. And qualifying for it could take more than a year, much longer than it takes to shoot an episode. I want it removed basically so I'm more mobile. I don't feel like less of a woman with it. I just want to be able to be a normal woman.
Considering the timeline, the stars of the show often turn to crowdsourced fundraising in order to raise the cash necessary for other procedures. Chad Dean of Season 4, for example, raised nearly $6,000 on GoFundMe for skin removal surgery following his massive weight loss on the show. Well, the goal is to keep losing and provide for the family. Although many 600-pound life stars are married when the cameras start rolling, some of their relationships have a habit of collapsing during post-production or later. In Touch even went so far as to say most 600-pound life stars end up getting a divorce. This includes Season 2's Christina Phillips, who weighed 700 pounds at the start of her journey on the show, and roughly 400 pounds less by the end. Her husband, Zach, who was featured on her episode, didn't support his wife's decision to lose weight, and according to Phillips, is no longer in the picture. She said on the show, It became clear that me becoming independent from Zach was not going to work for him. My family doesn't realize how hard it is for me to watch them eat what I want in front of my face. Like Phillips, Ja Lin lost more weight on season two after also dealing with an unsupportive husband, who was admittedly only into extremely large women. I've always liked bigger women, you know? Why settle for a hot dog when you can have a steak? She announced her divorce in 2015 during her My 600 Pound Life Where Are They Now special, revealing on the show, he didn't want me to lose the weight and I didn't deserve to feel bad about choosing my health. Big can't be beautiful when it means my daughter may not have a mother. Though being a single parent came with its own challenges, Jalin said she was doing better than ever. And I don't see any of my family and friends unless they come to see me. My 600 pound life typically focuses on the participants' overeating habits and mobility issues at the beginning of each episode. But what cameras may not necessarily show you is just how dirty some of their homes might be as a result. A man claiming to be a camera operator for the hit TLC show alleged on Reddit that My 600 Pound Life took him to some of the filthiest homes he's ever seen. He revealed, One family was moving out of their apartment and we were shooting the move. They were very, very unsanitary. He explained that this particular family covered up their dog's excrement with plants, and when they went to remove a bed from one of the bedrooms, they discovered, quote, thousands of bugs living under it for who knows how long. He added, It was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Since its premiere in 2012, seven of the show's stars have died, according to People magazine, as of April 2020. And one of the first participants on the show, Henry Foots, died in 2013, just over a year after his episode aired. He visited Dr. Now's office in hopes of losing much of his 750 pounds. While it's not clear exactly what caused his death, a local Houston news channel reported just months prior to his passing that he may have suffered some sort of, quote, medical episode while driving a shuttle bus, thus causing an accident. Former star Sean Milliken died at just 29 years of age, a couple of years after starring on the reality TV show in 2016 when he originally weighed more than 900 pounds. Complications from an infection led to his death, according to a post on his father's Facebook page via TMZ. I could believe in a future now where I'll be able to go out and do things. And some stars have even died during filming. Kelly Mason appeared on the show in 2019, weighing more than 700 pounds. She was able to lose some of the weight, but around the ninth month of filming, she tragically passed away from a heart attack. Each episode of My 600 Pound Life details a patient's year-long weight loss journey. But if you're wondering where these people come from and how they land the role, according to Distractify, it may be as easy as calling Dr. Now, visiting the doctor's website, or responding to the show's casting call. But while any of those avenues may get someone through the door, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll appear on the show. First, the applicant needs to meet the initial weight requirement of at least 600 pounds. And if cast, the potential star will also have to abide by Dr. Now's rules, which, as fans of the show know, doesn't always happen. And you're already losing control. Dr. Now told People magazine, There have been a few patients I felt I could no longer help. I will always be available if they need me. If they won't stick to the program, at some point I can no longer help them and they are taking resources from someone else who needs it. Although many stars of My 600 Pound Life are unable to work and thus receive disability benefits or financial support from family members, some stars are able to make a living, even at the outset of their weight loss journeys. How do they do it? Well, some turn their obesity into cash by modeling on fat fetish sites, where users pay for suggestive pictures of big, beautiful women. I felt like Miss America. 
and I decided, you know, whatever size I am, I'm just gonna be this size. Season 2 star Ja Lin earned money that way, posing in underwear on a site when she weighed around 600 pounds. She modeled mainly to raise money for weight loss surgery, that is, until she landed a role on My 600 Pound Life. And she wasn't the only show alum to earn cash by modeling. Season 3 star Pauline, whose online alter ego was Polly Bombshell, also posed on those types of sites, according to Starcasm. Dr. Now is an integral part of My 600 Pound Life, but that doesn't make him immune to controversy. In addition to starring on the series, Dr. Now also works with patients unaffiliated with the TLC show. And one such patient even sued the doctor. According to Radar Online, a woman named Michelle Park filed a lawsuit against Dr. Now and his associate for malpractice after claiming the pair left a, quote, almost 7-inch piece of tubing in her body post-gastric sleeve surgery in 2012. According to the lawsuit, the tube punctured Mrs. Park's colon and required the surgical removal of a part of her colon. As a result, Park allegedly suffered physical pain and impairment as well as additional medical expenses. But in the end, the suit was dismissed, with Radar Online suspecting a secret settlement could have been reached. Dr. Now did not deny that a tube was left inside the patient, but he told the outlet, the lawsuit against me was dismissed because I was not the one who left the tube. Sometimes reality TV isn't very real, at least according to my 600-pound life star Dottie Perkins, who claimed in a lawsuit against the show's production company, Megalomedia, that her TV story was fabricated, per starcasm. Perkins, who appeared on the fourth season of the show, claimed some of the scenes were staged and edited in a way to make it look as though she was gaining weight, when in actuality, she was dropping pounds after seeing Dr. Now. Her lawsuit stated, To support Megalomedia's narrative, they created a dynamic where Dottie would not follow the diet. To do this, Megalomedia forced Dottie to eat excessive amounts of unhealthy and fattening food. This would lead to confrontations with Dr. Now, in which he would criticize her for not being able to follow the diet. The lawsuit also stated that Perkins ended up being hospitalized on the show to have her diet monitored, despite the fact that she was losing, not gaining, weight. So all I can do is try harder every day, no matter the situation, to keep getting healthier. So what exactly replaces the burgers, fries, and shakes that my 600-pound life stars have come to rely on prior to appearing on the show? A high-protein, low-fat diet, according to Distractify. Upon seeing Dr. Now, patients receive a customized diet plan, one that is meant to dramatically reduce their caloric intake from upwards of 7,000 calories to just roughly 1,200 calories a day. For women, Dr. Now recommends eating a daily diet that includes 5 to 6 one-ounce servings of grains like brown rice and quinoa, healthy fats like fish, nuts, and olive oil, as well as fruits and veggies, among other healthy foods. We're going to give you the tool, but you have to do the work. It's necessary for Dr. Now's patients to become familiar with the controlled diet since, following gastric bypass surgery, they will be unable to eat as much as they had before. The doctor's website explains, weight loss surgery may address the mechanics of how much food you will need in order to feel full or how much of the nutrients and calories are absorbed into your system, but the surgery does not control your own post-surgical behavior. Emotional distress, gross negligence, and unpaid medical bills are just some of the claims made by former 600-pound life cast members against the show over the years. According to The Sun, transgender star Destiny filed a $1 million lawsuit against Megalomedia, claiming she was taken advantage of during filming. In the lawsuit, she alleged that producers pressured her to shave her beard and only paid for one therapy session, even after she told them she suffered from gender dysphoria and needed professional help. The death of L.B. Bonner, a season 6 fan favorite who took his own life, also resulted in a lawsuit filed by the family against the production company, according to Starcasm. The lawsuit claimed the company failed to provide him with mental health services and forced him to film when he wasn't ready. According to a text chain included in the lawsuit between Bonner and one of the show's production assistants, Bonner expressed concerns about his mental health, to which the assistant allegedly responded, Fake it till you make it. Fans know Dr. Now as the surgical genius behind TLC's My 600 Pound Life. But while he's helped numerous clients completely transform their lives over the years, there's a lot more to this reality star doctor than meets the eye. Here's the true story on Dr. Now. 
On My 600 Pound Life, viewers watch Dr. Now perform a variety of surgeries, including gastric bypass, gastric sleeve, and excess skin removal surgery after a patient has lost a significant amount of weight. Each of these procedures requires a specific skill set, which Dr. Now has clearly perfected. Just consider the sheer number of people he's treated over the years. But what you might not know is that Dr. Now comes from a cardiology background. He spent his four-year residency at St. Thomas Hospital in Nashville, Tennessee, and then embarked on a fellowship at the Texas Heart Institute in Houston, which might be how he ended up in the Lone Star State. In addition to both heart and weight loss surgery, Dr. Now also conducts gallbladder and appendix removal surgery, according to Houstonia. When it comes down to it, he's a versatile surgeon with the skills to pay the bills. The vast majority of the time, the view of the operating room on My 600 Pound Life consists of Dr. Now operating via a laparoscope, which allows him to conduct a less invasive type of procedure. And as it turns out, he just happens to be a pioneer in this field. According to his website, he was the first doctor in Houston to propose, research, and adopt the benefits of laparoscopic surgery for procedures previously unconsidered. When Dr. Now first started out, the technique was literally on the cutting edge. Today, however, you'll find it in operating rooms all over the world. The reality star also performs surgery on people that other doctors would consider too high risk. Typically, if you weigh more than 450 pounds, the average hospital will require you to lose weight before they would ever agree to an operation. When you factor all of this into consideration, it's hard not to be impressed by Dr. Now, who sincerely cares for his patients. He told Houstonia, "...taking care of these people, that's my job. I never worked a day in my life." Since you lost your weight and you've shown that you can stick with your diet, we're going to approve you for weight loss surgery. Awesome. Thank you so much. While many reality shows are somewhat staged or scripted to create the most drama, My 600 Pound Life depicts real people going through deeply real struggles. That's an aspect that Dr. Now takes very seriously, and he sees his profession as a calling to help others. He told Houstonia, "...looking at the moral obligation that we've got, you see somebody who has no life who could have a life." But as generous as he may be with his time, it might be surprising to learn that Dr. Now often doesn't make a profit when it comes to weight loss surgeries. Still, that's not something that keeps him up at night. Speaking about surgeons in the weight loss field, he told the outlet, "...we don't need to be rich. We do make a living, but we don't need to worry about making a living out of every patient we see." Dr. Now isn't out to get rich on the backs of his patients, but that doesn't mean he's not about a little side hustle. For one, he's the self-published author of the book The Scale Does Not Lie, People Do, Reversing Obesity Now. And since he didn't go through a book publisher, all proceeds go directly back to him. He also has a variety of Dr. Now-related merch for sale on his website, including t-shirts, mugs, and magnets, all with his best-known catchphrases. How y'all doing? This is Dr. Now. You know me from my TV show. But perhaps even more lucrative than those hustles is the star's cameo listing. For $200, you can request that Dr. Now record a personal message for you or a friend. Given that the doctor has hundreds of positive reviews, it's safe to say that he's making some pretty good money while making his fans happy. If you're a longtime fan of My 600 Pound Life but haven't gone down the rabbit hole doing research about the show, then you might not know that Dr. Now went through a pretty rough divorce. What we've gleaned from public legal files is that in 1975, Dr. Now married mom of three Dolores, who was a stay-at-home mother for the duration of their marriage. But sometime during their decades-long partnership, things went awry for Dr. Now and his ex-wife. Dolores filed for divorce in 2002, and the process dragged on for two years before they finalized everything in a trial. Dr. Now then appealed the outcome, which was denied three years later in 2007. We'll probably never know what happened for sure, but as documents stated, the trial court attributed fault in the breakup of the marriage to Dr. Now, dissolved the marriage on grounds of cruelty and insupportability, and concluded that Dr. Now committed waste of community assets. Assets. In the end, Dolores was awarded 70% of the couple's assets. 
In addition to his successful medical practice, Dr. Now has some other talents that might surprise you. For one, it appears that he enjoys playing the guitar, as he has posted on Instagram. And it also looks like he is quite the accomplished visual artist. According to another post, the physician can be seen working on a landscape, writing, One more at work, it is finished. I never keep any artwork and give it away, but this one, so many people asked me for it, so I'm going to make some limited edition reprints. Apparently, the Dr. Coombe artist realized he could turn his passion for drawing into a bit of a business. And you can even snag some of his sketches on his website. Pretty impressive for a busy surgeon who only does this on the side. You've watched the show, you've followed the stories, and you've cried the tears of sorrow and joy. But have you ever wondered just how My 600-pound life came to be in the first place? As Dr. Now tells it, he never set out to get famous on reality TV. Instead, he says he was just doing his job. He shared with Houstonia, It just happened. I was operating on a lot of 600-pound people. All right, let's check your current weight and see where you're at. While that was all true, it was only part of the story. When you dig deeper, you'll find out that Dr. Now's son is the main reason that the show ever made it to air. Producer and director Jonathan Now Zardin formed the production company Megalomedia back in 2003. And according to the Austin Chronicle, the first documentary film that they ever released, World's Heaviest Woman, was about Austin, Texas local Renee Williams, who weighed over 800 pounds. Tragically, the subject of the film died two weeks after receiving weight loss surgery, but the seed had been planted. After that, Megalomedia filmed six episodes of Last Chance to Live, which eventually turned into My 600-Pound Life. It might be worth noting, though, that some of the stars of My 600-Pound Life have filed lawsuits against Megalomedia for a variety of reasons, according to Starcasm. Fortunately, none of the claimants appear to have a bad thing to say about Dr. Now, and most show participants seem to be genuinely grateful for his help. Some clients of the show who sued Megalomedia alleged that the production company did not have their best interests in mind. But while they weren't targeting their life-saving surgeon, some of Dr. Now's previous patients have brought lawsuits against the doctor, according to Radar. In one from 2012, a patient alleged that Dr. Now left part of a tube inside of her, which was in her body for two years before puncturing her intestines. The patient later dropped the suit, and Dr. Now explained, "...the lawsuit against me was dismissed because I was not the one who left the tube." That same year, another patient filed suit against the surgeon, alleging that he performed a botched abdominal surgery on her, which resulted in pain, deformity, and impaired movement, according to Radar. And once again, the claimant ultimately withdrew the complaint. Finally, in 2017, yet another patient sued Dr. Now, this one also claiming that he left part of a tube and a steel connector in her body. The lawsuits don't end there for Dr. Now, as family members of his patients who died after having surgery have also claimed that the doctor was negligent. Back in 2012, the mother of Tina Shepard alleged that Dr. Now did not properly educate her daughter about what to expect after weight loss surgery, according to Cron. However, Dr. Now denied any wrongdoing and explained that she hadn't satisfied the post-surgery requirements, adding, "...we called and called her to make follow-up appointments and she said she would come in, but she never showed up." Also back in 2012, a woman claimed that Dr. Now was negligent in previously treating her late husband, according to Radar. The claimant later dropped her suit after Dr. Now asked for proof of her claims. Looks like for this doctor, even the best intentions don't always result in a desirable outcome when it comes to his patients. Some viewers who watch My 600-Pound Life might not fully grasp how someone could become so overweight that they clock in at 600 pounds or more. And some might be tempted to think that the patients are at fault for their morbid obesity, or that they could just turn it all around if they had even a shred of willpower. Still, as Dr. Now puts it, that's not really the case for most of his patients. He revealed in a chat with Kron, "...obesity is not a choice for people. It's not something that most people can walk their weight off with diet and exercise." I don't even know the person that I was pre-weight. I lost her years ago. 
it appears that it's infinitely more complicated than simply flipping a switch, something that Dr. Now understands better than most. But even so, the reality star doctor does believe that patients are able to improve their outcomes, and that it does take hard work to turn it all around. This is the reason why not every patient is successful. When it comes to genetics and lifestyle, he says, it's our own responsibility to understand what the problems are and what the solutions are. I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate, I want chocolate. <laughs> so chocolate is more important to you than living, apparently. Not only does Dr. Now implement occasional tough love with his clients, he certainly puts the focus on wellness in his own life, too. And he makes sure to get his exercise. You can see this play out on Instagram, where he posts shots of himself working out, accompanied by pearls of wisdom. In one caption, he wrote, We can come up with a million reasons not to do regular physical activity, but the fact is that each year, nearly 3.2 million people die because of inactivity. That's not the only time the reality star proved to his fans that he regularly gets his sweat on. In another post, he shared a video of himself doing preacher curls. And he worked his lats in yet another Instagram video. Scroll a little further and you can see Dr. Now crushing some pull-downs. It's nice to know that Dr. Now practices what he preaches to his patients and makes sure to keep himself accountable, even at 76 years old. Of course, the doctor also makes healthy eating a priority as well. While Dr. Now may be a busy physician, reality TV star, published author, and social media personality, he still makes time for things in his life that don't have anything to do with business. For one, the surgeon enjoys spending time with his family, posting on Instagram, Some of my hobbies include playing with my grandchildren and building tiny Lego hospitals. It also appears that Dr. Now enjoys a great game of chess, as well as the many health benefits that come with it. Revealing that he played lots of chess during the pandemic lockdown, he wrote, I've enjoyed playing chess for decades. The brain is a muscle, and brain games are a great way to keep your mental health. It sounds like this doctor is here for his own best health, as well as that of his legions of fans. TLC reality sensation My 600 Pound Life follows women and men who all first appear on the show as morbidly obese and attempt to shed the pounds through gastric bypass surgery and an extreme lifestyle change. But how did the stars become so dramatically overweight in the first place? Here's the real story. For some, it may be tempting to judge the stars of My 600 Pound Life and put the blame squarely on their shoulders. That's because a lot of people think that maintaining a healthy body weight is as simple as balancing the calories taken in and calories burned. The whole world is falling apart. But the problem with that thinking is that there's more to the story than meets the eye, according to the show's physician, Dr. Now. In an article for Obesity Help, he wrote, We need to spread the message that obesity is not a patient's choice, that it is a metabolic and genetic disposition that people have, and this is a disease and needs to be treated as a disease. It may be a seriously compassionate approach, but it's also true. That's why Dr. Now does his best to help anyone who comes asking for it. He continued, When it comes to my patient process, I don't have a selection process like most doctors have. I don't have any selection process. Everybody comes and we take care of them. If you're unfamiliar with the psychology that's involved with the patients on My 600 Pound Life, it can be extremely confusing to see family and loved ones bringing the show's stars all kinds of unhealthy food. For example, on Amber's episode, her boyfriend helped her buy whatever she wanted at the grocery store, even though she could barely fit in the car. I do feel guilty about bringing the food, but at the same time, it's, it's so hard to stop. Then on Laura's episode, her family went out to eat with her and brought her a platter of fried food even though she was in a wheelchair and on oxygen because of her weight. You might think they could just stop, especially when they can see how deeply their loved one is struggling, but many enablers like being needed and are afraid to rock the boat and cause more problems. I just keep my mouth shut because I don't want them to get mad at me. It's been well documented by the medical community that we are all highly influenced by our environment as children. By extension, the things that we look to for pleasure and nourishment at such a tender age also loom large in our young brains, including food. Dr. Now explained to Houstonia, When we are born, food becomes the center, the first thing that a child gets comfort from. It logically follows, then, that when we encounter difficult scenarios as adults, it's not uncommon to search for the same kind of comfort in familiar things like food, according to Dr. Now. Sugar became the thing in my life with my grandmother that I knew could make me feel better when I was afraid or upset. 
In the United States, you have to be at least 18 years old to buy tobacco products, depending on the state you live in, and 21 to buy alcoholic beverages. But there are no age restrictions on the foods you can purchase, nor is there a limit to how much of it you can take home. That means pretty much anyone can buy whatever foods they want, healthy or unhealthy, as long as they have the cash. Because I can't stop myself from eating. If there's any food in the house, I eat it, so we run out of food quickly. Additionally, unhealthy food is available in an extraordinarily wide variety of places. drive throughs grocery stores, restaurants, delis, and more. There's no shortage of processed carbs, burgers and fries, potato chips, sugary drinks, cookies, and candy at gas stations and pharmacies. It seems like anywhere you look, there's a treasure trove of calorie-dense snacks. That's why on most episodes of My 600 Pound Life, viewers see the stars of the show moving through the aisles of the grocery store, loading up their carts with food that they know they shouldn't be eating. We'll eat everything here, either today or by tomorrow. Violence can have damaging effects on survivors, including leading to overeating. Such was certainly the case for Kirsten, who was assaulted at a party when she was 17 years old. She remembered. And after that's when I started not caring about a lot of stuff. And I kept eating and Maybe I ate, I was hoping to just keep people away from me. Kirsten's eating habits spiraled shortly thereafter, with violence being the catalyst for binge eating. There's a well-documented link between chronic overeating and poor mental health, according to Science Daily. Specifically, overeating is linked to an increased risk of both anxiety and depression, something My 600 Pound Life has profiled. Many of the show's stars have battled with one or both of these diagnoses. Justin opened up about how much he struggles with chronic anxiety and panic attacks, starting from the moment he wakes up in the morning. He confessed, And I have a lot of anxiety. So when that first wave of pain hits me, I start to panic a little. In order to cope with those feelings, he turned to food, which only made his situation worse in the long run. It got so bad that he became a shut-in, ordering everything he needed online just so he wouldn't have to leave his house. Growing up in a household where one or more parents are addicted to drugs and alcohol can deeply traumatize children. Additionally, children of addicts are about twice as likely to develop addictive behaviors themselves, according to American addiction centers. That was definitely the case for Nicole, who was already overeating when her parents became addicted to cocaine, which led to her home becoming an unsafe place for her to live. She remembered, When my parents were doing the drugs, I would get so mad, I would scream and holler at them, and they just ignore me. Nicole would then shut herself in her room and cry and eat until she fell asleep. By age 16, she weighed almost 400 pounds. What's to blame? It's easy to forget that addiction comes in many forms. Whether it's alcohol, drugs, video games, or anything that allows people to activate their brain's pleasure centers on demand. Unfortunately, that also means that people who are susceptible to addiction have a harder time experiencing normal, everyday joys, according to a study conducted by Harvard. And of course, addiction is not an easy thing to break, so the results can be quite damaging for addicts. Food addiction is something that every single patient on My 600 Pound Life is contending with. That's because eating food triggers a dopamine response in the brain. She acts like an addict. Her fix is food. Some people engage in eating patterns that get that good, happy feeling activated, but are unable to stop despite the consequences. Too much of a good thing becomes a potential death sentence. Change can be hard for anyone in all aspects of life, and it takes real work to completely reboot your lifestyle. But for the stars of My 600 Pound Life, making those tough changes is a matter of life or death. Yet some patients struggle with adopting Dr. Now's diet and exercise plan on the show more than others. While the majority of the patients do eventually stick to the rules, get the weight loss surgery, and work toward living a healthier life, some are more resistant to change. For example, Penny, who Dr. Now once famously called, quote, delusional, expected weight loss surgery to be a magic solution to all her problems, and resisted doing things the way she was told to. Where's my yellow brick road? Why didn't I get it? Because I'm working hard, Dr. Nizal, and I'm being good. The majority of the people on My 600 Pound Life have had issues with their weight from a very young age, usually due to traumatic events. That wasn't the case for Marla, who didn't start gaining weight until she was solidly in her 20s after she became the victim of a horrible crime. I love the way it all tastes. I love the way it makes me feel. It's my comfort. As she recounted by In Touch, Marla had tried to break up with her then-boyfriend, but instead he kidnapped her and held her hostage at gunpoint. When police tried to rescue her, her then-boyfriend shot two officers and escaped. By the time they caught her fugitive ex, Marla was already up to 700 pounds and had completely shut herself off from the outside world. Post-traumatic stress disorder can be linked to the development of an eating disorder, according to the Psychiatric Times. Marla's reaction to the trauma of crime is not uncommon. 
There are a lot of factors at play when it comes to how people become obese, according to Stanford Healthcare. Obviously, one is diet, how much food you eat on a daily basis, as well as what kind of foods you consume. Your metabolism also plays a role, as hormones help you regulate your appetite and keep you feeling satisfied. And of course, there is the genetic component, which means that everyone stores fats and processes food a little differently. The kind of lifestyle you live also has a hand in determining your body weight. If your work involves doing a very physical job, you're going to naturally burn more calories than someone who sits at a computer every day and doesn't have an exercise regimen. And when it comes to the patients on My 600 Pound Life, many of them are too large at the start to move much at all, let alone have an active lifestyle. For example, Ashley was barely mobile during her episode, and she relied primarily on her five-year-old son to help with the majority of her day-to-day -day tasks. It makes me feel guilty because he's five. He should be playing with toys and watching TV. I should be taking care of him. In earlier episodes of My 600 Pound Life, therapy wasn't discussed as an essential component of the weight loss process, at least in front of the cameras. But as the show moved into later seasons, Dr. Now is more often shown telling patients that to lose weight and work the program successfully, they need to go to therapy to deal with their issues. Your priority and you have to take care of you. But not all of the show's stars are particularly enthusiastic about sitting down with a mental health professional and facing the real source of their pain. For example, Ashley was initially hesitant to go to therapy during her episode, which impeded her weight loss. But after a breakthrough session with a therapist, she realized how important it was to confront those issues. She said on the show, But I know that there's a lot from my past I'm going to have to face if I ever want my anxiety to get under control. After that, her weight loss was jump-started. Despite the fact that fat phobia is a reality in society, according to the International Journal of Eating Disorders, there are plenty of folks who are attracted to people with larger bodies. I'm thankful for the support from my boyfriend. He is the kind of guy that prefers bigger women. But sometimes a person's desire for a certain body type can be harmful for their partner, especially if they're not sensitive to their partner's needs. Perhaps the most memorable instance of this on My 600 Pound Life is Jalin, who wanted to change her lifestyle so she could literally save her own life. Her now ex-husband, Gareth, wasn't supportive of her journey and the couple was forced to end their marriage. But it seems Jalin wanted to shed all of her excess baggage. He didn't want me to lose the weight, and I didn't deserve to feel bad about choosing my health. 